we have the meats. Arby's, we have the meats. We got some nice tires on the wheels, and as I promised, we're going to get those on today. But first, we have a really cool project. In this video, we are going to be completely redoing this existing steering wheel. It has quite a few existing issues, and I really want to get them fixed. But I want to be able to keep that original steering wheel so I can have that airbag. Is that a huge deal for a lot of you guys? Probably not. But but your other option is to buy something that's already pre-made, which is cool. But I kind of want to try to do something on my own. But first, here are the issues with the existing one. First off, the steering wheel is huge. Now, you guys probably can't tell perspective or scale right here on camera, but uh, it's equivalent to driving one school bus. This thing is ginormous. Now that is my personal biggest pet peeve with the steering wheel, but there are some other things that, you know, they're just kind of rough. In the literal sense of roughness, take a look at the quality of the leather now. This is 34 odd year old leather, so it is seen better days and it is in dire need of being replaced anyway. And finally is the shape. Yes, it's a circle. It's what you expect from a steering wheel, but there's no accents or grip handles on the side here. And I do like the flat bottom look. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this steering wheel off, break it all the way down, and then create a new skeleton based off this steering wheel, and then recover that skeleton so we have all the working functions. We still have the cruise control, we still have the horn, still have the airbag, but we have ourselves a much more updated, much cleaner, modern looking steering wheel. So we're gonna go ahead and start by disconnecting the battery and pulling this steering wheel off. With the steering wheel now off, the next thing we need to do is strip it completely bare. So take everything off the side, take the plastics off, get it down to bare metal. So I just finished taking all the rubber off the outside. Fun fact of the day, I had no idea there was rubber on steering wheels, but this is the metal that we're left with. So it's very thin, which will be very nice for us to hopefully bend it into the correct shape we want. Now the plan is we're gonna take off all the interior supports, grind that all back, cut off this piece of metal for the ring of the wheel, and then flatten out the bottom and shrink it all up so it'll be a lot more sporty. So that's the essential plan. We're gonna grab our angle grinder, a headphones, and start getting this off. So we took out the inside of the steering wheel. The support is now gone. Well, I mean, it's still here technically. Bam, look at that. Looks a lot better outside. But with that gone, we trimmed off a section of the steering wheel so now we could shrink it all up and this will give us a much tighter radius and diameter for the steering wheel. So this will be connected with this. We're gonna clamp it all tight, weld it up, flatten out the bottom, probably with some fancy tool. I think we have a hammer and then reconnect that to the center.
So it is about two weeks later now and I had sent the steering wheel off with my friend to get it all welded up. I got it back and it's, ooh, it is the exact shape I wanted. It is nice, let me show you guys. I mean, look at that, that is just, I love the flat bottom. The diameter for the wheel is so much smaller than it used to be so it's gonna be so much nicer with the grip. But obviously, can't leave it metal so we have some work to do. So the next step for us to do is to put all of this chewed up gunk back on. Now there is a way we're going to make this all perfectly smooth and I'll show you that. But the first thing we need to do is to actually get this rubber back on. We are gonna open this back up, put it back on, put all these other pieces back on the bottom as best we can and then we'll go from there. So here's where we're at right now. This took about half an hour, but we have most of the outer lining back on. Now, as you can see, there are gaps in here, and we're not just gonna cover that with fabric and call it good. What we're actually gonna do is we're gonna use body filler to fill these gaps in. Now, the reason is there doesn't really need to be any structural support at all. The purpose of the inside here is just to keep the shape. It's just to give it a little more thickness for the actual metal wheel itself. So all we're going to do is take the body filler, fill in all these gaps around the side, so that way it is completely smooth, and then we'll be able to start actually decorating the inside. So I've laid about three layers of body filler and it's enough to cover all the gaps. I haven't sanded any of it down yet, but we have one more thing to do before we sand this down and make it smooth. I am going to use this putty to make myself some grips on the side. So my goal for the top is to make something like this with a little bit of an indent. I don't really want to do this bottom thing. It's, it's not particularly my style. I might mess around with it. My goal is I want to make something like these top indents here where it comes in a little bit. This way it'll make the thumb grips a lot nicer. So that's the direction we're going ahead, but I'm going to use this putty because it's just a whole lot easier to work with. It's such a gorgeous day out, the perfect time to just clean up your car, just take 20 minutes out of your day, get your cars looking nice. Oh, I love the sunny weather. As for the steering wheel, we're back outside because we finished putting the filler and putty on everything that we needed and now it's time to sand everything smooth. So we need to knock this all down. The nice part is it's all gonna be covered by the time we're done with it, but that doesn't mean that we can cheat the inside of this. So, so let's go ahead and get this smooth and then we can get on to the next step. I <laughs> look at that. Oh, that's so cool. That is such a good looking steering wheel. This project's been so much fun. Although quick YouTube secret, you have to lean your seat all the way back in order to get the steering wheel filmed because otherwise it's just too close. So uh, I'm in a mood just to take a nap with this seat recline. That sounds nice. 
We are at a pretty good spot right now with the steering wheel, and in fact, it's time to start putting the coverings on. Now, is it perfectly, perfectly smooth? No, but it's it's not needing to be. The point of this all body filler is to get the structure. So now that we have the structure in there and it's all smooth enough, we're gonna start actually doing the coverings. The way that we're going to dress up this wheel is using two materials. We have an Alcantara fabric as well as a carbon fiber wrap. Now, we're not going real carbon fiber because, well, two reasons. One, it's a little out of budget, and two, you're, you're not replacing anything with carbon fiber, actually, so it's not like you're getting any benefit fits from carbon fiber it's just for the look so the way that we're going to do the fabric is that we're going to first put some patches on around the sides here and then we're going to be doing carbon fiber along the top and along the bottom and the center cap will be done with the alcantara as well now i'm not gonna lie this is the part that i've been most nervous about for the entire project because for me getting something shaped is pretty simple it's just using the same tactics we use on the rest of the car but applying them to the steering wheel and now it's sewing I don't really sew that much, so we're going to be stretching our limits, but it's definitely going to be beneficial because if I don't push myself, then I'm never going to get what I want without having to pay an arm and a leg for someone else to do it. So, so it's time to buckle down and get this going, and after we finish this, I'll come back and tell you everything that went well and everything I should have done differently. This was like the first time I've ever sewed with string. I'm used to just sewing with glue. This, this was an adventure. <laughs> it actually turned out okay, but just okay. So if you take a look at it from a whole, it looks pretty decent, but then you zoom in, there's definitely some work to be desired on the stitches. Now it's it's decent and it gets the job done, but it's nowhere near perfect. If you look down on this side, you'll see there's areas that are just frayed stuff that just doesn't look quite perfect, but it holds it in tightly. Now the way that I stitched it was I went one, I only had one needle, so I worked my way all the way down with a cross pattern and then crossed back on the opposite stitch going all the way back to tighten it all up. So it's on there incredibly sturdy, but there is one thing that helped me out so much. It is the fact that I chose to use spray adhesive when laying the fabric down. This makes it so it holds tight because when I had done this before on my Nissan wheel, the stitching was okay, as was this, but the fabric would just kind of like flop around as you twist it. Now, this is solid, so the stitching actually doesn't do much more than just close up the ends. Now I also took the time to lace an Alcantara over top of the center cap so that is all finished up now. But the last part that we have to do is to put carbon fiber on the top and the bottom of the steering wheel. But before we do that, I actually need to lay one more layer of light filler. The top part of the steering wheel is fine, but the bottom part just has too many indents. Areas like right in the center of the screen that just need to get one more thing of filler over it and completely smooth out so that way the carbon fiber wrap can stick as best as it possibly can. I've spent hours sewing, laying carbon fiber wrap, filling, sanding, making this steering wheel pretty stinking decent. And now, we're finished. We have the steering wheel on the car now, and it looks so good, but I think it's time to finally get the wheels on the car, pull it out, and see everything in the light for the first time. I am really excited. Oh, it's gonna look so cool. All right, let's get this going. Oh man, <laughs> that looks so good. Uh, I'm sorry I couldn't pull it actually outside. Unfortunately, the front wheels are actually hitting the fender since we haven't trimmed it out, so I, I can't move it without absolutely tearing up my brand new tires. I really don't wanna do that. But ooh, it just looks, I'm. this is a good progress stopping point. So here we go. 
that's nice. Fitment wise, this is starting to dial itself in really well. I got a nice gap between the tire and the flare and it's exactly what I want. Same with the front, I'm actually happy to have a little more gap because this will let me have a little more lee room when hitting bumps. Also, if you look at this compared to the back, on the front we don't have much of a lift in regards to where the tire could sink up into the flare, so this gap needs to be higher. Whereas in the back we have this whole section right here where the tire can go up into it. Now we're gonna trim out the inside a little bit so we can make sure that happens, but this is, this is right where we want it. Now, now for what we actually worked on, the steering wheel. I'm quite happy with the way this turned out. Now the shape of it is what I'm more happy with other than the rest of the stitching, the carbon fiber wrap, the Alcantara. I mean, just having the shape makes me so much more content with the look of the steering wheel. Pardon the glare, but it's something where my thumb fits right inside here and just has a good, good feel to it. Now it's something I can't explain on camera, unfortunately, but this is exactly what we were going for. Now let's talk quality really quickly. Quality wise, six out of 10. It, it's it's decent, but it's by no means professional, as I said before. But when you're looking at cost, this is about a $50 project all in, and that's counting buying more carbon fiber wrap and Alcantara fabric than you'll ever need. So much so that I actually wrapped the stereo cover in carbon fiber wrap as well. Now, is it worth trying without any experience? Because that's essentially what I had. You guys saw the result. Now, I think so, because here's the difference that you're looking at. To get this professionally done to the essentially perfect standard, it would cost right around three to $500, if not more. Because what you're doing is you're taking the existing wheel, cutting it, trimming it, before even doing any of the stitching. So there's a whole lot of extra work that goes into it. Now, if you're comparing it to simply buying an aftermarket steering wheel that's already pre-made, the cost for that is around 150 bucks because it's about $100 for your hub and about $50 for the wheel if you're going really cheap. And that of course isn't even including a quick release, which this one doesn't have, so we won't even include that in the price. So for myself personally, I've run a bunch of aftermarket wheels before in the past, and not only was I looking to try to push my boundaries, I also wanted just to try something new instead of just doing the same old rinse and repeat, get a new steering wheel that's already pre-made that someone else has and run that. So that being said, I I'm quite happy with how this turned out despite it not being anywhere near professional grade. Such a great learning experience. Can't wait to do it next time and make it so much better. But I hope you guys enjoyed. Check out all the links down in the description. Thank you guys so much. Like and subscribe. Bye.